Let's face it, we all have way, way too many tasks and obligations in life. So it's only natural that you wake up feeling overwhelmed because there's only so many things you can accomplish in a day. And unfortunately, when your schedule is overbooked, it's easy to procrastinate on the things that truly matter to you. That said, there is a simple but powerful strategy that can dramatically transform your personal and professional life. That strategy is to frequently say no when it comes to any task, project, or obligation that doesn't perfectly align with the goals that you've set for yourself. So in this video, I will briefly talk about the importance of saying no and then give you five easy ways to put this idea into practice. Now be sure to watch this video to the end because I will talk about a concept known as the 25-5 rule that will help you make smarter decisions about when to say no. Plus, I'll provide a free printable you can use to take action on this rule. And finally, if you enjoy the content of this video, then please help us out by taking a few seconds to hit the like button. Let's get to it. Why you should frequently say no. The biggest reason you should say no is related to your goals and what you want from life. As I discussed in our recent video about SMART goals, it's important to set goals for all seven areas of your life. And whenever you agree to a task or project that's not related to your goals, you are wasting time on an activity that doesn't really matter to you. The truth is, whenever you feel like you have too much to do, it's easy to push off your important goals because you don't have the physical or mental bandwidth to focus on them. Furthermore, it's easy to fall into the trap of agreeing to the requests for your time from other people simply because you don't want to disappoint anyone. We all want to be liked, so we'll often agree to something, even when we know it's something we don't have time to do. Okay, now you know why it's important to say no to the unimportant things in life. So the question is, how do I say no without angering people or getting into trouble at work? Well, here are five actions you can use to effectively say no. Action number one, align your obligations to important goals. We all have obligations that aren't always fun, but still need to be completed because they're a vital part of being a normal, well-adjusted adult. In other words, if you say no to every request, you probably won't get very far in life. We all have things that must be done, so you might as well accept that you have things to do, no matter how much you don't like them. My only advice is to relate each task to one of your important goals. For instance, let's say you hate doing the dishes. It's an annoying task that eats into your schedule, and sometimes you're too tired to worry about a few dishes in the sink. On the other hand, if being part of a harmonious marriage is an important goal, then you can view the dishes as an important part of the relationship because you're doing something that makes your spouse happy. So if possible, Look for a way to relate each of your obligations to an important life goal. Action number two, say no as early as possible. Be upfront with people about their requests. If you know you can't follow through on a request, then be firm and tell the person right away. Honesty really is the best policy here. Whenever you get a request that you can't fulfill, tell the person that you have a few priority projects that require your full attention and you can't afford the distraction. Usually, most people will understand your need to focus on what's important. That said, try to end the conversation on a positive note. You can do this by recommending someone who can help, or offering a helpful resource as an alternative. Or if you think that you might grant the request sometime in the future, then ask the person to follow up on a specific date. Saying no doesn't make you a selfish person. It makes you someone who clearly understands what's important. By having clear goals, you don't allow the demands of others to distract you from your priorities. Action number three, compare each request to your current projects. As the German military strategist Helmuth von Moltke once said, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. The lesson here is that it's easy to mentally commit to just your goals, but it's often challenging to stay the course when you discover new opportunities or receive requests from the people in your life. That's why I highly recommend taking a few minutes whenever there's a request for your time to compare it against your current priorities and projects. You can do this by implementing Warren Buffett's 25-5 rule that I mentioned in the introduction. Here's a six-step process for implementing this idea. One, write a list of the top 25 projects or goals you'd like to focus on in the next year. 
2. Highlight the five goals that are the most important to you or truly speak to you, which you can then consider to be your urgent goals. 3. Eliminate the other 20 goals you've written down. Even if they seem important to you, trash them. These 20 goals aren't urgent and therefore shouldn't be given any of your time or effort. 4. Compare the new opportunity to your current list of five projects. Whenever a new project idea comes up, ask yourself, is there an existing project that's not as important as the new one? If so, ask yourself, what is the worst thing that would happen if you removed one of your current projects from your life or put it on hold? 5. Figure out the reason why you might be interested in replacing one of your existing projects. Is it because you've hit a challenging obstacle? Are you worried that you'll make a mistake? Have you been frustrated at the lack of visible results? Are you bored with it? These are important questions to ask because sometimes our desire to start something new comes from a fear of confronting a major obstacle. It's okay to eliminate existing goals and projects. Just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. 6. If you can't replace an old project, but you still want to work on the new one, then figure what can be eliminated from your life. Perhaps you might be willing to reduce your TV time by an hour or two every day. Or maybe you can decrease the time spent on your favorite hobby. The one thing to keep in mind is that when you add new projects, that extra time has to come from somewhere. So if you want to add a new focus, then you'll need to sacrifice time that's dedicated to something else. And as a reminder, we'll talk more about the 25-5 rule at the end of this video, where I'll give you a free tool to take action on this concept. Action number four. Talk to your boss about your top projects. While it sounds nice on paper to focus only on projects related to your goals, sometimes you need to face the situation and focus on work tasks that you might not enjoy. Obviously, you can't say no to your boss and expect to keep your job for very long. But if you feel overwhelmed at your job because you have dozens of tasks, then you should have a candid conversation to relieve some of your job pressures. Here are four steps for talking to your boss to make sure you're working on what's actually important for your job. Number one, do your homework ahead of time. Identify the two or three regular tasks that provide the biggest impact on the company's bottom line. These should be the activities that you're getting paid to complete. Next, identify the regular tasks that get in the way of these core activities. Ideally, these should be tasks that could be delegated or simply eliminated from your day. Number two, schedule a time to meet with your boss and briefly mention the reason why you want to meet. This will give her the opportunity to prepare for the meeting and provide helpful feedback. This advance notice is important because you don't want your boss to feel like you're throwing something at her that requires an immediate decision. Number three, start the conversation by admitting that you've been struggling to keep up with your work projects. Talk about the two or three high leverage tasks that you've identified ahead of time as being important. Ask your boss if she agrees that these are your priorities. If not, then ask her what she would consider to be important to your job. Keep asking questions and probing until you both can come to an agreement on what you should focus on daily. Number four, talk about how certain projects and random tasks hinder your ability to focus on these critical tasks. Usually, the biggest culprits are meetings, email, and random disruptions. Sure, they might often seem urgent, but they often can turn into time-sucking tasks that cause you to procrastinate on the activities that are truly important. The key to this step is to provide solutions instead of complaints. Sure, going to your boss and admitting that you can't do it all might seem like a scary conversation, but the goal here is to realign your time so you can focus on the activities that generate the biggest profit for the company. If you can show that eliminating the unimportant leads to an increase in productivity, the conversation should be an easy decision when it comes to getting what you want. Action number five. Ask yourself, what will my obituary say? It's easy to say no if you constantly think about the important things in your life. One way to do this is to imagine what will be written in your obituary. Think of the words in your mind right now. Would you prefer a description that talks about positive things? Like how you're a loving parent, great spouse, world traveler, active member of your religious community, and someone who loves life. 
Or would you choose an obituary that describes how you said yes to every project, worked late at night, and always chose your career over your personal goals? Hopefully, you pick the first option. I know that's the description that I would prefer. When you align yourself with your goals and consistently say no to anything that doesn't match your current focus, you'll free up time to focus on the activities that make life worth living. So there you have it. Five ways to effectively say no and focus on what's truly important to you. Now, as promised in the introduction of this video, we have a free printable PDF you can use to implement the 25-5 rule that we talked about in this video. My recommendation? Check out the link in the description box and print out this sheet. Then spend half an hour to identify your five most important goals. And then, whenever you get a request that doesn't match one of these goals, then be firm about saying no to it. Also, if you want to learn how to set the right kind of goals, then be sure to watch our video about the smart goal setting process with 21 examples. Again, the link is in the description box. Finally, we talk a lot about success habits to level up your life on this channel. So be sure to like this video, then hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you want to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and be sure to stick around to watch the next video in our channel.